All right, everybody, uh, I'm back. Same afternoon, and I'm gonna keep the phone vertical for the sake of the editing process later for this video, so sorry, everybody. I'll try to remember to put the phone sideways before I start taking video in the future. But anyway, um, I had a few extra minutes because I finished up my errands, and here it is, the end of the day, and I'm still up in Seattle, and I see another beautiful church with a copper roof and a whole bunch of crazy awesome mud floody features such as a giant former entryway that might have once been like two stories high you see that higher arch now the entryway is six feet below ground makes perfect sense in a town where it rains 13 months out of the year constantly why wouldn't your main entrance be down a bunch of steps and then the main entrance to the church itself. It's just up, just up about 15 steps, 10 steps, no big deal. Just peeking inside, can't see much. But yeah. Okay, they just build like this. We just build like this. Oh yeah, there's a there's a window for you. Look at this, somebody lives here full time. This is somebody's house right here, okay? We just build like this though, in Seattle. This makes perfect sense. This is totally the way to build buildings. All right, to pick up where I left off with my discussion when we were walking around the other cathedral up here on the hill we've got buildings that just don't seem to be able to match up to the ground level this is beautiful in here isn't it wow um just don't seem to be able to match up with the ground level for any reason and uh sure there's loads of great reasons literally Every building on this block up here at the top of Capitol Hill, boom, over here, mud flood looking building, okay, another turn of the century building. Even the ones right next to them that don't look like it and are reskinned and modernized, most of them were built at a lot of the same time periods. There, across the street there, another one. All these little two-tone ones with the two-tone brick and the marble, boom, right over there. I mean, literally, one could have a uh, real party just sitting here looking at the map in this area and looking at all the historical buildings. Um, so let's see, at each corner we have a little, you know, cone aerial with lots of formations on the side of it. Our friends Global Vision and others who figure out the Antiquitech part of things might really have a good time with that. And then of course there's our you know, top, tippity tip top copper peak on the cathedral spire. Ground floor windows, right on the ground. Entrance for the public, 25, 20 feet, 20 feet above sidewalk level. Totally normal, once again. Beautiful stained glass work. This is the sanctuary and chapel entrance right here. So we'll look, I don't see a cornerstone or a dating stone yet for this, so we'll have to look up this building's history. This is the fellowship hall also, underground entrance. Okay, so this is the thing, for those of you who haven't watched anybody's little mud flood videos before, this is why we trip, okay? You, you're gonna stand here and tell me with a straight face that that was meant to be like this, that this building was built like this? What are these windows doing? What is that window doing? Okay, it's in a corner of a corner. What, they forgot and decided to build a whole nother building in front of this building? Yeah, okay. 
whatever you say, but you still haven't answered all my questions about the oddities. In fact, you've answered none of them. This place is locked up tighter than a drum, so we can't get in here today. It's not all it's not all stone and stuff. There's some plaster stuff hiding here as well. But anyway. Okay, so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out about both these churches today. Here's a little info plaque about the Seattle First Baptist Church. Let's read their story. This distinctive English Gothic style church was completed in 1912, okay? The third edifice pioneer Baptist congregation founded it in 1869. Its spire, which once dominated the city skyline, continues to say, here's a church dedicated to the worship of God and human unity. And we have a uh, nice Chief Seattle head right here. And we have our artist, 1977 Herard. Or, I don't think... Sorry there. I was going to say, I don't think that's our artist. That's somebody who in 1977 scratched their own name at the bottom of that bad boy. Okay. Seattle First Baptist Church. So we're going to look it up. 1912 is its date of construction. And yeah, just to, just to really drive it home for you. These are mud flood windows, guys. Okay. When we say mud flood, you say Tartaria. When we say mud flood, you say Tartaria. That's what's up. That's what happens around my house. Every time I open my fat mouth and I see something that looks like Tartaria, I holler Tartaria and my kids holler mud flood. And I hope that you make your kids just as wacky as I have. All right. Love you guys. We'll do a lot more with this soon. I hope you enjoyed it though.
Hey everybody, Steve here. Um, just doing a quick walk around of another building in not downtown Seattle, but Capitol Hill neighborhood of Seattle here. Um, this is the St. James Cathedral, one of the most historic buildings in the city and probably uh, the most Tartarian looking church that I've seen since Spokane. And I think we were at St. Patrick's out there. It might've also been at St. James. That one might have been an Episcopal Cathedral. Go back and watch that video on YouTube. Um, my Spokane Tartaria hunt. But right behind me here, you'll see just the beginning of this building. It's wild. I'm gonna flip the camera around and take some more shots. We're gonna try to get to where we can get a reasonable shot of these incredible roofs. Since I'm down here at ground level, I may have to resort to going home and, and looking up and pulling up images of the church from above and from around. Uh, so just going over our usual Tartarian checklist sort of thing here. I'm up, oh, we're a little smudgy. Let's see if we can clear that a little. Okay, so we are several feet below the base of this, you know, floor level of this building. I mean, we're talking like I'm, I'm 20 feet below the entrance to this building right now. So certainly wasn't built with uh, accessibility in mind in that respect. The two towers of the church have to be 150 feet, 200 feet high. I don't even know. Yeah, at this level, it's gonna be real difficult for me to get even a decent shot or perspective for you for how cool the church is. And I'm at work, I'm working, I'm running around, so I only, only have so much time. But everything here is on a very, very grand scale. Very grand scale. We really can't capture those copper rooftops for you properly from here. I could see them from a few blocks away really amazingly. They were like a beacon calling to me. Snap a still or two of this door. And we can try to look, look at that a little closer later also. I guess this video is going to look all vertical. So I'm holding my phone vertical. Stupidly. I'll look up the history of when this building was built for us, everybody. But it's... It's a cathedral, all right. It's a fortress. Archbishop Thomas J. Murphy Courtyard, added in 2006. Cathedral Chapel's open.
Okay, so we'll see how we edit it together. There, you know, this is just a super quick visit, and what I'll try to do with this video footage. There we are. So here's our mud floor windows on the floor level. So again, back to the checklist, right? You've got your ground floor windows, you've got your underground entrances, and you've got your uh, ostensibly lobby ground floor entrances that are. 20 feet separated from one another and neither of them is at the sidewalk level where you're walking around out at the streets. So these are simple hallmarks. Here's more windows down behind planters. They have to be gated off and graded, graded off because of course they're not high security windows anymore. This thing's an absolute fortress. I'm sure they're gonna tell us it was built in the early 1900s or 1920s or something. But this building's even bigger than the cathedral in Spokane. There's a ladder there heading up to rooftop access. Gosh, the sun's just too much, you guys. I'll get some I'll get some quality images of the of the parapets and the towers themselves. Um, I'm sure there's a lot that could be done here in terms of actually going into the main cathedral and looking at the church there as well. But this is St. James. Welcome to St. James. Baked and awake. Checking out the Catholic Archdiocese of Seattle. We'll come back when they're having mass sometime. I'll try to add a little more detail for you guys and info on the building and turn this into something you can have some fun with here pretty soon. Take care everybody.